Hello everyone and welcome to this Game Creator 2 Basics tutorial. Today we're going to go through opening and closing a door, which is this lovely door on screen here. And we're also going to turn this spotlight on and off. The first thing we're going to do is open and close this door. So we've got a character set up with a third person camera who can just walk up to the door. And what we're going to set up is that when the player gets close enough to the door, he'll be able to press a button to open and close the door. So we've just got a trigger collider set up on our door object here and we're going to want to add a trigger component to that from Game Creator or I've already got the search box set up there so we add a trigger. Now we want to know when the player gets near the door which is why we've got the collider so we're going to make this an on enter collider and on trigger enter so when something gets close enough to this trigger our collider here, we want to do something. We're going to set this up as a specific collider. We want to collide with the player. So we don't care if anything else goes there. We only care if the player goes there. And when the player gets there, we want to enable the ability for the player to press a key to open the door. Uh, because otherwise, if we just set it up as press the button to open the door, the player could be standing anywhere to do it. So what we're going to do is from here, we're going to set up a sub object. I'm just going to call this empty and we're going to call this uh, open door. And this will contain our open door actions. Now I'm going to turn that off and we're going to come back here and in our on trigger enter, all right, we're going to set active open door. So when we get close enough to the door, we're going to turn this object on. And then what I also want to do is add another trigger here. And you might guess what we're going to do here. We're going to do on trigger exit, specific player. So when the player leaves this area, we are going to set active again. And we are going to get that open door and we are going to set its value to off. So when we get close to the door, we'll switch the open door object on. When we get away from the door, we'll switch the open door object off. And if we just go into play mode here, just to test this to make sure it works. So if we look at this open door action here, if we get close, it should go on, off, on, off. Beautiful. That's exactly what will want to happen. Okay, so now what we can do is we can put all our door logic into this open door action. The first thing we're going to need to do is set up a variable so that the system knows when the door is open and closed. So what we're going to do there is on our door, we're going to say game creator variable name variable. And I'm just going to call this object vars for variable. And inside here, I'm going to make a variable called is open. So is the door open or not? We're just going to hit plus. And then I'm going to change this to a Boolean, which is just a true false variable. Conditions that check whether the door is open or not. So we can come into here again and we can say game creator conditions. And this will be open door conditions and we're going to come over here into the inspector and add a branch and the first condition we're going to add is a boolean so we're going to compare a boolean which is that variable we just created so we want to come down to the variables local name variable we want to grab that variable that we made and drag it in and then you won't be able to see this because it's going to pop off the screen a bit, but we've got a little drop down box here and I'm just going to click is open and you can see that appears there. So any variables we've created in that vars object that we created over here will automatically populate into this little drop down list. So what we're saying here is if open is true, then do something or if open is false. So we're going to start with is open false. If it's false, obviously we want to open it. So if false, then add an instruction. And the instruction that we're going to add is rotation. So we want to change the rotation of something. We want to rotate the hinge on the door, which is this object here. 
we're going to set it. So we're just going to say we want the rotation of this object to be 90 degrees. So that's just going to rotate the door 90 degrees. We're going to say, let's take a second to do it. And then we also want to say there, we want to change this Boolean. So we want to set the Boolean now. The Boolean we want to set again is our variable, local name variable from the vars object. And we will select is open again. And now we want to say it's true. So what this is now saying is, if the door is, is false, so if it's not open, then open it and change the Boolean to say that it is open. Then obviously we want to have essentially the opposite of this. So we're going to add another branch that says, if our Boolean, so again, we're going to compare our Boolean variable, local name variable from vars is open. So this time, if open is true, then what we want to do is add an instruction, rotate the door again. So change rotation. And again, we're changing the rotation of the hinge. We are setting it and we want to set it back to zero this time. And again, we'll give that a one second duration just so that it takes a moment to do it. And again, we want to set our Boolean. So set bool. And yet again, our bool vars is open and we want to set it back to false. So we've closed the door and told the Boolean the door is closed again. Now that's our logic setup. So we've got our two different branches here. And we can even give them a description and say, call this one if door is closed. And we call this one if door is open. So on the open door itself, so this is only going to be able to be used if you're within that door collider that we set up at the start. So what we want to say here is trigger. And the trigger that we're going to use here is an input trigger on input, the input that we want to use is keyboard, a keyboard press, and I'm just going to select the E key. So if the player hits the E key, I'm not going to bother with the minimum distance, then what we want to do is call our conditions. Run conditions is the action that we want here. So we want to run a set of conditions and here's our open door conditions that we just created. And we want to say, if when the E key is pressed, run these conditions, wait for them to finish. If we hit play and I walk up to the door and hit E, see the door opens. And if I walk up to the door again and hit E, the door closes. And because we've used that Boolean, you can't just spam the E key and break it in any way. It's not going to function again while the door is opening or while the door is closing. So you need to wait for it to finish. And that is simply how to open and close a door. And you'll see that if I come all the way over here and hit E, nothing will happen because we're too far away outside that collider. Now that we've got our door set up, we're going to set up the light switch to turn this spotlight on and off. I've just put a little object on the wall here and we can pretend this is the light switch. So what I'm going to do is create a separate little blank object on there called activator. And that's what's going to hold our trigger. And we're going to use another key. So on input, input system, sorry, on the input keyboard, key press. I'm going to use Q this time, just so it doesn't conflict with our door. And we're going to set the minimum distance this time. And what this is, is how far away you can be from the trigger when you activate it. So now we have to be within a meter of this trigger or it won't work. And what we want to do is set up some conditions again. So we'll come back over here to our object game creator interaction conditions and we'll create a new set of conditions and I'm just going to call this light switch and the first branch of our light switch condition is going to check a game object and it's going to check whether the game object is active or not 
So is the spotlight active? If the spotlight is active, then what we want to do again is add an instruction, game objects, set active on the spotlight again, and tell it to turn itself off. Otherwise, we want to turn the spotlight on. So what we want to do then is add another branch. We're not going to put a condition in here because we don't care whether whether anything is on or off or whatever really. We'll add another instruction here that just says set active on the light, turn the light on. So what it's going to do is evaluate this condition first. So if the spotlight is on, it's going to turn it off and then it's not going to go to this branch. If the spotlight is not on, it's going to say, well, we won't do this and it's going to go to the next branch. So it'll automatically fail to the next one. So this is all we need to do is say, if it's on, turn it off. Otherwise, essentially this is the otherwise or else statement here, turn it on. If we come back to our activator, we've got our keyboard press. So when we press Q, we want to run these conditions, run the light switch, and that is all we need to do. So if we press play now, if I'm over here and I press Q, nothing's going to happen because I'm outside of that minimum radius. And if I come over here now, I can hit Q, it'll turn the light off, I can hit Q, it'll turn it back on. And I can spam that to my heart's content. Hopefully it was useful for everyone there. Two different ways of achieving basically the same effect. We've got the one that lets you put in a Boolean to control whether you can keep spamming something or not. And we've got the version where you can simply just flick something on and off to your heart's content. I hope you all uh, enjoyed that tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.